right, in this video we're talking about the Wilcoxon signed rank test. The signed rank test is a non-parametric test that's akin to the um, match paired T test. Remember the match paired T test was for dependent samples and we wanted to compare them. In the match paired T test we compared the means. Here we're going to be talking about a comparison of the medians. But either way, the main thing is that we're going to have to block out um, the differences between the subjects so they don't obscure the overall differences that we want to see. So let's look at the type of data you expect to see with this kind of procedure. You usually have like a before and after row, and we have different subjects. In this case, I have subjects 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, this data is made up, but let's just imagine that it's a high school gym class, and the PE teacher is going to give them an exercise routine to help them to do pull-ups. And so before the exercise regime is put into place, they're going to have each student of the six students have a pull-up test where they're going to do the most pull-ups they can do in one single setting. So we have student one only can do two, student two can only do one, and then four, three, seven, and six. So those are the results for the students on their pre-pull-up test. Then we're going to give them some exercise routine to follow for a couple of weeks, and then we're going to afterwards test them again, and we're going to look at their results or their performance after the fact. And what we're trying to see here is not whether the students, the students are different from one another in their ability to do pull-ups, right? We know that they're different. We know that already. So what we're really trying to see is if the exercise routine works, if it helps people do more pull-ups at the end of the two-week period. And so we're trying to test that. So we use this typical blocking technique where we take the difference between the before and after results, and then we want to analyze that set of data. So what we do first is we take the difference, and you can see I've done that. 2 subtract 5 gives you negative 3, 1 take away 3 gives you negative 2, 4 take away 2 gives you 2, so on and so forth, and we have this row of differences, right? Now in this procedure, what you want to do is take the absolute value, so that's what this stands for, ABS, absolute value, of those numbers, so I just did that, so 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, 1 becomes the result, and then you actually rank the absolute values there, you rank, in other words, that row of numbers. But what you want to do is keep track of which ranks belong to positive date differences and which ranks belong to negative differences. So you see these, all these differences that had negatives, they'll go to the negative side, and all the ones that had positive numbers at that point will go to the positive total. So we're going to have two separate rank totals. I've done them in different colors here so you can see that. And what you're going to see then is that T negative, which is the total for the negative ranks, is going to be based on these red numbers, and then T positive, of course, is the total for the positive values. Now, you'll notice that I had to handle ties here, right? Because, for example, one was the clear first choice, first rank value, and so it gets the rank of one. There's no other one, so that's obviously the first number we will rank it one. But then we have three twos, so they should get the ranking two, three, four, but 2, 3, 4, and of course those would be different ranks for the same number, so we have to average those ranks. So 2 plus 3 plus 4 averaged out ends up giving you 3, because you get a total of 9 divided by 3, and you end up with 3 for your values. So I give each 2 a value of a 3. So again, I have to average the tied ranks. And I do the same thing for the 3s, which are also tied. They would have gotten the ranks 5 and 6, so I gave each one 5 and a half. All right, now, Again, because this 2 was originally a positive, so I put it under the blue, the positive total is only 4. And then the other total here is the total remaining here. So 5.5, 5.5 gives you a total of 11, and then 11 and 6 gives you 17. So the total here is 17. So those would be the totals. Now, from those, we'll come over here and look at the different testing procedures we can do to figure out if there is a significant difference between before and after. So let's look at the left tail testing scenario. In the left tail testing scenario, the alternative hypothesis says the median for the first group is less than that for the second group. What we're basically saying here is that the first group of data is the before row, right? We're saying that that is smaller than the after, which would make sense here, right? Because we would think that before they do the exercise routine that's supposed to make them do more pull-ups, they would have a smaller number of pull-ups, so the median would be less for the first one. So our test would probably in the real world be a left test. Now, left tail test, sorry. So then what we're going to say here is that T positive ends up being the rank sum of the positive differences. That is your test stat. So we're going to use the T plus, this total, as our rank total. 
And then from there, what we're going to do is use that as our test stat and compare it, compare it against a table value. And the table value is essentially compared against a critical value. And this number, this critical value, is a small number. And we're always looking to see if the test stat is significantly small, in other words, when compared to that critical value number. So is this number less than or equal to this number? If it is, it shows that the, the HA can be supported and HO can be rejected. That means that, yes, there's a significant difference between the two rank totals. This one is significantly small, which means the other one is taking all the big ranks, which means there is an improvement. It means after is larger. Because after is larger, we get a lot of negative differences. Therefore, the negative total ends up being the bigger total. But that's basically the pre procedure, essentially. So again, if we're saying that the median before would be less than the median for the group after, then at that point, the T positive, the positive rank total becomes our test stat. We compare it against a critical value. If it's significantly small, we reject the HO, support the HA. All right, this is the right tail test. Right tail test is similar. This time, we want to make this argument that the before is larger than the after. This would actually, in this context, be saying that the workout routine is actually detrimental, meaning that the students would actually do less pull-ups. Because if the median before means they do more pull-ups before than after. That, of course, doesn't make sense based on our data. But anyways, that's, that's what we're talking about if we're talking about a right tail test. In that case, then the team negative total becomes your test stat, right? And again, we're always looking for it to be small against this critical value because that's how the table works. Again, this critical value table is something you'll see in the problem videos. But um, you're going to get that number based on the sample size involved in the problem. And when you look at that, you're going to see that t negative, of course, um, is supposed to be less than this critical value. In this case, I doubt that would happen because our t negative is actually the bigger of the two. But either way, that would be the logic of the procedure. If it was less than the critical value, we'd reject HO to support HA. Remember, these critical values are always based on your significance level and your sample size, but we'll see that in the problem videos. And then finally, the two-tailed scenario. In the two-tailed scenario, you're just saying, hey, there's a difference, right? They're not the same. Something happens between the before and after. The exercise regime that's put in place does something. It might make it worse. It might make it better. We don't know, but it makes some change. If that's the case, then you're going to let T be your test stat, where T is defined as the smaller of the two different totals, right? So you have T negative, T positive, whichever one is smaller, that becomes your test stat. And remember, we're always looking for it to be significantly small compared to the critical value. So we reject if that test stat is less than the T naught value, the value you get from the table. If it turns out to be less than that number, then of course we would say reject HO. So in this case, if we were talking about this kind of hypothesis between T negative and T positive, we would choose T positive because that total is smaller, right? Since it is smaller, we would compare it against our critical value. If it's less than the critical value, we go ahead and reject HO, support HA. So again, that's basically the Wilcoxon sign rank test. Remember, you use it in place of the match pair T test or the dependent T test. It's the non-parametric version of that. So you can't assume normality. You can pull this test out and try to use it. If it's able to reject the null hypothesis, remember it's done its job. You don't have to worry about the fact that it's weak and the fact that it's non-parametric. That doesn't matter. If it can't reject HO, you got to think about the possibility of whether using a parametric test would be better.